Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 6 of the topic Thermodynamics. In part 4 and 5 of these videos, I told you about the first law of thermodynamics. Let us now understand this law better. Let us go deeper into what it means. The equation for the first law of thermodynamics is that delta U, that is the change in internal energy, is equal to the sum of the change in heat, that is Q, and the work done by the system or uh, on the system. So let us take these one by one now and try to understand work better. How is work done in a chemical when you are carrying out a thermodynamic equilibrium in chemistry? What is it that you would understand by work? You carry out a chemical reaction and the, when the reaction takes place, the products that you obtain are either gases or the reactants are gases which may be used up or products that are formed that are gases and as a result of this, you know, when gases are formed or the pressure of the gas increases, the volume increases. And when the pressure inside increases, in order to decrease the pressure, the volume should go up. And if the pressure inside a chamber is decreasing, the volume should come down in order to make the pressure, the external and the internal pressure equal. So whenever the volume expansion or contraction takes place, that is what causes the work by the system or on the system. Whenever expansion takes place, the system is doing the work because it is pushing the surroundings away. But whenever the surroundings are pushing inwards, that is the time when work is being done on the system. So this is a pressure volume kind of a work which would happen usually in the chemical systems. So let us first take this example and understand the pressure volume kind of work. Now we are not carrying out a chemical reaction in this example. We just took one mole of a gas, an ideal gas, in a jar. And when we took one mole of an ideal gas in a jar, what according to you, you've done the uh, gaseous state. What according to you should be the volume of one mole of a gas at STP? It should be 22.4 liters. So you would expect the jar to have a volume of 22.4 liters. But let us imagine that it has a volume which is much greater than this. Now the jar is fixed with a piston and this piston is frictionless. That is the piston can move up and down very easily but it seals the air inside it yet it is, it is friction without any difficulty it can move up and down. Now when we take one mole of gas and the volume is more and the atmospheric pressure which I am writing as P external that is the external pressure. Now whatever is around this jar is the surrounding. So the pressure of the surrounding would be the external pressure. So the external pressure which is atmospheric pressure is greater than the pressure of the gas inside. As a result of this what will happen? Automatically the external pressure is greater so it'll, the piston will start going downwards. It will start pushing the piston downwards because the gas inside it does not have equal pressure so it cannot push back with the same force. So the piston comes down till it comes to that level where the internal pressure becomes equal to the external pressure. Right? Now when this happens the external pressure has pushed the piston down and brought the volume down. So the, there is work being done on the system by the surroundings. Do you understand? When, whenever contraction takes place, work is being done on the system. Whenever expansion occurs, the system is doing work on the surroundings. Now, when the piston moves down this much, now I have made the same jar in three situations. Here was the initial volume. The initial volume would have been from here to here. So that is Vi. And when the piston came down, this becomes your final volume. Final volume, this is the bottom of the jar. So the bottom of the jar, this is the final volume, right? This much is the final volume. This is the initial volume, whatever volume is occupied in the jar here. And this is the final volume. So I just made the jar without the piston. And I drew lines to show you what is, to just measure how much change occurred. This was the level where our initial volume was. And this is the level where our final volume is. Let us assume that this distance that the piston traveled, it is, it is a length which is L. And what is, how do you calculate volume? 
volume is area into length so if we know the area of cross section of this jar the area of cross section of the jar would be equal to the area of cross section of this bottle or it could be equal to the area of cross section anywhere that you measure in the jar because it's a straight jar or it could be the area of uh, area of this piston the surface area of the piston so you could take the surface area of the piston or this or area of cross section anywhere in the jar you would be able to get the area now what is area equal to area is equal to p external the pressure external into delta p i will explain this to you better later so length into area will give you will, will give you the volume right length into area would give you the volume so now having understood this let us move on to the calculations and derivations here let us suppose that the piston moves a length l and area of cross section of the piston is a call it the area of cross section of the piston area of cross section of the jar area of cross section of the bottom anything they are all the same so if the area of cross section of the piston is a then how would you calculate the volume change the volume now this is the volume that has changed because initial volume was this much final volume is this much so this is the volume that has changed so how would you calculate this volume change which we write as delta v delta represents a change so delta v that is the change in the volume would be equal to v final that is the final volume minus the initial volume now look at this carefully final volume is less and initial volume is more so when you write vf minus vi when it, there is compression occurring what would be the sign of the change in volume it would be a negative value why because vf is smaller than vi so you will get a negative value i just want you to keep this in mind if there was expansion occurring this was the initial volume and this was the final volume you would have got a positive value for delta v in this case since we are talking of compression what is going to happen the delta v that you would get would have a negative value we use this information later but i just want you to know right now so v delta v would be equal to vf minus vi now this would be equal to length into area because volume is length into area length into breadth into height so length into area would be volume but we know how do you calculate p external what is pressure pressure is force per unit area so what would this external pressure be equal to the external pressure would also be equal to force per unit area therefore what would the force be if we want to calculate the force force f would be equal to p external into the area right in our case we assume the p external was the atmospheric pressure so force then the force with which the piston is being pushed downwards would be equal to p external the pressure external into the area of cross section again because this external pressure is also working on the jar on the piston in the jar and it is this area which it is affecting is again the same that is the area of cross section of the jar therefore we'll say that force is equal to pressure external into area so what do we understand from this that if work is done on the system as is happening in our example work is being done on the system by the piston then work how do you calculate work work is force into distance and we just calculated force force is p external into a so and what is the distance that it traveled length l so what would the work be work would be p external into a into length so we get p external into a into length will give us the will give us work now area into length this area into length what is it it is delta v so let us this can also be written as p external into minus of delta v now here a little confusion may occur when you read your textbook why have they put this minus here the minus they have put in here is because you are going to get a minus here i told you when compression is occurring when compression is happening your vf minus vi is going to be negative but what had we done when we in part 3 of this uh, uh, chapter 
I told you that whenever work is done on the system, the the sign or the work done on the system is always positive. Work done by the system is means it is expending work. It is using up its energy. So work done by the system is negative. It is losing energy. But work because we are talking of internal energy. And work when it's being done on the system it's gaining energy. So when we get work done on the system we should get the value the work should be positive it should be a positive value in order to get that positive value we write p external into minus delta v it should be negative why because our delta v is negative and when delta v which has a negative value is multiplied by this negative we will get a positive value for work which is the convention that we want so Moving on with this, P external into delta V would be V external into delta V. And what is delta V? Delta V is Vf minus Vi. So this is how you will get a positive value for work as it is done by the system. Now having understood this, let us now move on further. Let us imagine, here what we did, we took a frictionless piston. And the external pressure was atmospheric pressure. It pushed the piston down in one step. Imagine that the reaction is not as simple as this or the process that thermodynamic system that you are studying in that the process that is occurring is not so simple. It's not occurring in one step. It is occurring in many steps. And in every step, it is again a compression process. But in every step, the external pressure changes. If the external pressure changes, I've drawn this graph here. We find that the external, this was the initial uh, volume and this is the final volume, compression is occurring. Initially the pressure was this much, then it was this much, then it came up here, then it came up here. So pressure is changing in different steps. So what do we do in this case? We calculate the area under the, the pie chart and we calculate the work done from there. So what would work done be equal to? In different parts, we calculate the work done for different pressure values. And therefore, what will be the total pressure? You remember when I told you that internal energy is a state function? It doesn't matter whether you moved from Vi to Vf in one step or you went from Vi to Vf in many steps. The internal energy of Vi and Vf is going to be constant. So if it is constant, it doesn't matter whether the step, it was, the change occurred in one step or it occurred in multiple steps. But how would you calculate? When you calculate, you will have to find the sum of all the steps. We have reached the conclusion that P work done by the, uh, on the system is equal to P external into delta V. But P external is not constant. So we write it is a summation of the P which underst is understood as external pressure but it has different values. So it is the summation of the pressure into volume. Here I would like to tell you that we would like to use the convention negative again. And the reason you understand because delta V is going to be negative and in order to get work positive we must have the negative summation of this so that we get positive work because it is compression that is occurring. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye-bye for now.